Hey guys, what's up? Loco here. I have another recap for you today. It is EG versus Team Liquid. Before we start, I want to do a quick shout out to the YouTube commenter who told me to make sure my mic isn't in frame because it's taking away the focus from my camp. I did it. We fixed it. We're improving. I'm learning. We're getting better. Anyways, let's get right into the game. So EG versus TL. There really isn't a big rivalry versus EG or TL. The two social media accounts went at it, so it made things more interesting. I love the banter coming from TL. We need way more of this. We need LCS teams to be way more engaged and build a storyline, or every other LCS match just feels the same. And also, EG, I like what you're doing, kind of, but what is your CEO doing? Why is she randomly shooting darts at the Team Liquid jersey? It must be some kind of a boomer reference that I don't get, or yeah, the joke's just over my head. Anyways, let's get to the game. The draft part is so, so important, and EG just crushed Team Liquid in it. Well done, EG. You did your homework. It's really weird to say out loud, but Team Liquid's weak link right now is double lift. When he isn't on champions that can get priority and have the team play through him, he actually is underperforming pretty badly. So when EG banned out Varys and Zaya and Team Liquid self-banned Aphilios, TL left themselves in such an awkward spot. And EG just did a really good job of identifying how TL likes to play. And just in the first three bans, they destroyed pretty much TL's chance at winning the draft phase. Also, because EG didn't ban any of the OP champs on blue side, it leaves Team Liquid in a really awkward situation. They ban out Aphilios, they ban out Yumi, and on their last ban, they're left with both Orn and Soraka. Do we want to give EG both picks and have them pick one and we take the other? Team Liquid overall as a team hasn't been very great about picking up new champions, and it's the exact same story for Soraka. They don't feel comfortable playing it, so they're forced to ban Soraka and give Orn up for free. That was very evil and very genius of you, EG. Props. When we look at rest of Team Liquid's draft, it doesn't really play that well with each other. When you draft Tom Kench and Ash, you really want to be 1-3-1-ing, and Set and Victor aren't the greatest split push champions. Also, for Elise and Victor, they don't really work well off of each other. They don't have a lot of kill pressure, they're both AP, so the enemy mid laner just stacks MR and it makes it really hard to kill them. Elise and Set have synergy at the very least. Set is a winning matchup on Orn, and they can try to set up dives on him early. But other than that, it's really hard to find the synergy within this draft. EG, on the other hand, is really abusing Team Liquid's draft. They have a poke comp with really strong frontline versus a team with very minimal engage. The only engage Team Liquid really has is the Ash Arrow. And the later the game goes, and as more people pick up Merc Treads and QSS, Ash Arrow just does not become a real engage anymore. And EG also got to put Bang, one of their best players, on an extremely comfortable champion, Ezreal. So yeah, they're doing a lot of things correct in the draft phase. Overall, Team Liquid drafted a teamfight comp that doesn't have much synergies together and is really going to struggle later on in the game in terms of engaging onto EG's backline and also just killing the tanks on EG's team. And EG, on the other hand, was able to draft a pretty cohesive poke comp was very hard to kill backline due to the low engage of TL. So the games aren't over at draft, but TL has kind of pushed themselves into a corner and the gameplay part of it is going to be extremely hard. So let's get started. So not much happened in the early game. EG was able to get Herald, TL was able to get Inferno Drake and both teams took a turret. But now we have the second Drake coming up and we're going to see all 10 members converge down and really contest for this. We can see EG doesn't have control and it's TL actually the one with river control and EG has to slowly check in. Luckily they have a lot of tanky members and they also have a lot of pokes. Bang leading with ult, able to chunk out double. The dragon getting really low, TL wants to finish this before a full blown fight happens. Impact gonna pour it in. And Sven Skarin actually able to get the dragon and TL's gonna be on the run, Broxa got chunked out. Impact, ooh he's tanking a lot. And Jensen did a lot of damage, but the damage focus wasn't done very well. Zizuki and Zezo extremely low, but they're both able to live. So yeah, EG going to be walking away with the Cloud Drake. So between the second dragon and this dragon coming up, EG was able to get Herald and use it on mid lane. And while that was going on, Team Liquid was able to get the top turret. And now we have both teams converging again on this dragon. So we're going to see Svenskeren check in. He's a Sejuani. Double-less arrow is going to miss. 
and now it's a really awkward spot for TL. Double's arrow was their only engage, and now they don't have a way to engage on EG, and EG can slowly poke with the Zoe and the Ezreal, impact cut off to the side, bang ult pushing the other people away, and Kumo able to use the blast plant and kill impact. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna live even if he flashes over. Svenskaren, I think he ulted because he knew impact had flash and he might have flashed over. Zizuke also able to take the blue, but you can really start to see the problems with TL's comp. Once they miss the Ash Arrow, it's really hard for them to do anything versus the Zoe and the Ezreal, and also just like the Fejani and the Orn walking in. This is why draft matters so much, and yes, games aren't over at draft, but sometimes you can make it really hard on your players by drafting like this. It's not like EG got the perfect draft either. One thing they do have to work through is the 1 3 1 portion of the game later, especially with Zoe side laning. Zoe really isn't a side lane champion, and she likes being mid lane, and yeah. She used her ult to check over the wall, and the Elise and Victor were able to kill her very easily. On the other hand though, on bot side of the map, Bang was able to get priority on double, and he rotated down to kill Impact with Kumo. So I think at this point, you can really see Orn come online, and rest of EG's comp really come together. Orn has both his items upgraded, Ezreal's Trinity also upgraded, Zoe's Ludens also upgraded, and yeah, TL's just not going to be able to do any kind of damage to the tanks. You can see Sven Skarin tanking, and then in a bit, just watch Kumo. He takes the arrow, he gets set ulted, and yeah, he's just not gonna die. He's just so extremely tanky. And then now you have Zazel coming in with Gargoyle's stone plate and tanking with the Braum shield. I don't think EG is playing these fights much better than TL. It's just that their comp is so much better, and TL's never gonna be able to kill their tanks. And also, they're never gonna be able to reach their backline either. So yeah, it's a really bad catch-22 situation. Anyways, EG is able to chunk out TL, and they're just going to be able to get the Mountain Drake and be at 3 Dragon and threaten Mountain Dragon full on Team Liquid the next time Dragon comes up. I think this is desperation from Team Liquid. I don't think they think this is a particularly strong or a great play, but they realize they can't team fight anymore, and they realize the longer the game goes, the worse and worse it's gonna get. So I think they attempted doing this Baron while EG is gonna set up for the Mountain Drake and play for the Mountain Soul and try for a trade. But yeah, TL's not able to get Baron. They're not in position to contest Mountain Soul. So EG's just gonna walk up, get this dragon for free, and get the Mountain Soul for free also. Effectively, the game is over. When tanks like Braum, Fejwani, and Orn get Mountain Dragon, and the Mountain Soul, it just is so incredibly hard to kill them, and TL's comp, especially with their backline being Ash and Victor, is just not going to have the damage to ever make it happen. After they get Mountain Soul, EG is starting to control Baron, you can see them walk into TL, and TL's going to try to kill Svenskaren right here. He's mildly annoyed and very tickled, and EG's just able to kill Double and Core for free. And yeah, that's going to be Baron. Two people dead, Brock's are flashing away, the turret going down before Impact can even TP. I mean, they can either choose to Baron or Inhibit or here. Let's see what they do. Looks like they're going to play for Inhib. Ooh, it might be later on enough in the game where they can get both, actually. Yeah. Double's dead for 25, Core's dead for 17. It's impossibly hard for anyone on TL to come into this jungle. I mean, it is their own jungle, but they just have zero vision. And imagine you're a Elise, you are a Victor coming in here. Zoe lands the bubble on you. Orn is able to ult you. What do you do? You get hit by Ezreal pokes. It's just so impossibly hard to check in. Okay, you can see Zizuke spotted out Broxa. Broxa forced to repel. I don't really like the decision here from Zizuke to go after and kill Broxa. The casters talked about it, how... He's just making sure it doesn't turn into a 50-50. But at that point, after Broxa repels there, he doesn't have flash to get into the pit. So he doesn't really have any way of stealing it. So I think Zizuki's just so excited. And the casters were being nice. EG reset after they got that Baron, and they're just going to be able to march directly into Team Liquid. Double is starting with the Ash Arrow, but Zazel just burns his cooldown, and he's not killable. There just isn't killable players on EG other than Zizuke and Bang, and they're just gonna play behind the Giga tanks and it's not gonna happen. And you can also feed Zazel with a very nice shield, 
blocking the victor laser um, from killing the cannon minion really nicely done and yeah they're just going to be able to march forward taking it pretty freely double doesn't have ult anymore yeah when kuma walks up like this when sven skarin walks up like this they just are not going to die i mean they are able to kill zizuke but they still have a lot of tanks up they're able to get the inhib bang is still very healthy so yeah situation getting worse and worse for team liquid Ooh, is double gonna die? Great eat by Core JJ. Jensen coming in. Ooh, very scary situation here. Okay, it looks like the tanks got chunked out enough. Maybe they'll back up. Yeah, I think this is it. I don't think they can get any more turrets. So we have the Elder Drake spawning in three seconds. TL definitely cannot give this for free. But they also have to kind of keep impact and base because they have two inhibitors down. Team Liquid starting Elder Dragon. EG making sure they push out mid first. They know Elder Dragon's not going to melt. They just have to be there before it finishes. Orn and Brom walking up first starting with the Ornold. And then the E forcing the Kench eat. I mean they're trying to kill Kumo. He has stopwatch and he's also the Orn. Spence Scaring gets in there with stone plate. He's not really going to die. And now look at Impact's health, look at Jensen's health. All they have to do is keep poking. They don't even have to finish Elder. They know TL doesn't have an engage and they can land any kind of random ass poke. Oh! Landing the charge on double lift, double lift forced to get eaten. Impact trying to front line but can't really make it happen. And yeah, EG's tanks just will not die. This was seriously a draft difference game. I think there's definitely problems with how TL is playing, but the way the draft went down, and also this being the mountain map, and EG able to get three mountain dragons meant TL was not going to have a chance. Bang, TP's into TL's base, just going to end the game on them. Well done EG, well done. I think my boy Saint said it best. Is TL even trying to win anymore? The comps they're drafting just does not make sense, and it seems like they're walking onto the LCS stage without any kind of game plan whatsoever. They're really trying to retain the old identity of let's be a bot lane focused team fight team in a meta where that's really hard to do and also in a situation where double lift is underperforming. I would love to see them lean a lot more into Jensen, lean a lot more into Broxa. Jensen and Core JJ are still really playing well and Broxa is the import you got to upgrade over X Mithy, right? Lean into the strong players you have, play with the mid jungle, play with the support, play for that 3v3, and just stop trying to force this identity from before. And maybe, just maybe, you have to force that identity from before, then there are better champs to do it with, and yeah, have a better idea on how you're going to go about things. I actually think if they're going to do this double lift thing, they should be picking champions like Jinx. They should be picking champions just in that vein, and not going into something like Ash or Kalista like they've done before. These kind of utility champions that can get dominance in lane will not give you that team fighting power you're looking for in the NTL. Just think about your drafts more. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's any way I can make this content better for you guys. And one last thing, I'm not crazy, I'm just so cool. Bye!